Okay, so I'm happy to see you, everyone. Hello, everybody. Thanks very well. Okay, good. So let's start with meditation right away. You can sit in a comfortable meditation posture. Uh, I don't see Zwe's legs, and Zwe, also you should not uh, lean over your sofa. Can you please uh, tilt, tilt the camera a little down? And uh, move it far, far from you. Uh, nice to see you, May. But I think, May, you, you need to be in, the, in grade one. This is not the class for you. You need to go to grade one. Uh, grade one is exactly one day earlier than this one so a uh, great one now what is your name what is your time uh, what is your day in, uh, wh where do you live may you live in san francisco okay so <clears throat> uh your class is on friday 5 p.m okay may friday 5 p.m all right. So, uh, May, do you have your dad or someone around? Yes, my mommy. Okay, yes. So, uh huh. Do, uh, because, uh, uh, what was the reason? Uh, uh huh. So, you had a technical reason. Okay, uh, so I'll give you the I'll give you the link. You probably had a wrong link. Are you in the in the Viber group? What is your name in Viber? T I M. Okay. So let me see. You probably are not in the group uh, for grade one, and that's why you didn't have the link, because uh, the uh, the organizer published the link for for everybody. Yes, just a moment. I'll, I'll add you to the. I cannot find you. Uh, can you can you send me a message in Viber now? So I'm waiting for your message. So I'm waiting for your mom's message, not yet.
Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I think we have I think we have this done so we can finally start. <clears throat> so let's sit in a comfortable meditation posture. Zwe, your camera is still not ready. Can you have it uh, can you uh, swap with the with the camera? So your camera will be on the on the armchair and you will be uh, there where is the camera now? Emily, do you have working uh, camera? Okay, good. Perfect. So as you're sitting in a comfortable meditation posture with the back erect, we will keep the uh, um, we will keep our eyes cast down, so we see the floor in front of us, and we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly from now on for ten minutes. I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently, lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. And changing. As we are getting gradually old, this body is changing. So we allow this change and heaviness in the flat piece of uh, flat piece of flesh at the top of the head we continue to the forehead eyes nose legs chin Cheeks, ears, back of the head, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be happy. We continue to the neck. 
shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be happy. We continue to the bottom, thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes, tips of toes and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be happy and changing And we enjoy this happiness. We allow this happiness to grow. As we allow this body to be the way it is, as we give freedom to this body, we ourselves achieve freedom from worry about this body. So let's enjoy this freedom. Let's enjoy this peace. Now we can share our peace with other living beings. We can start in our room voicelessly. We allow as we recite. 
May all beings in this room be in peace. May all beings in this room be in peace. And we can gradually expand our thought of loving kindness. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings on this planet be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for this sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. We don't move towards the camera yet. We stay where we are now. And we will take one more minute, during which we will not move at all, and just curiously watch what's going on in the mind. Are there thoughts or feelings or hearing or seeing what's going on in the mind?
Okay, very well. So now you can come to your cameras. We will uh, start with chanting. So today let's do the Sri Lanka pronunciation. That's funny. I gave Denza the host rights and now I don't have a uh, right to share the screen. So Denza, can you give me um, the right to share the screen? You would make me a co-host. You know how to do that? successful all right so uh, everybody please unmute <laughs> okay you can keep uh, your hands together at the chest and we can start yamahang vadami tang vadeta Aham Bhante Tisarane Nasaha Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Anugahan Katva Silang Detame Bhante Anukampan Upadaya Dutiyampi Ahampanti Tisarane Nasaha Panchasilang Dhammang Yajami Anukahan Katva Silang de Tame Pante Anukampan Upadaya. So, this is Sri Lankan pronunciation. So, uh, try to follow my pronunciation as exactly as you can hear. Um, uh, be careful, it is Yachami, not Asami. Yasami will be in the Burmese pronunciation. Now we are doing the Sri Lanka pronunciation. Tati Yampi Aham Bhante Tisarane Nasaha Panchasilang Dhammang Yajami Very well. Anugahan Katva Silang de Tame Bhante Anukampan Upadaya So I will now say one time Namotasa and you uh, will say it actually three times um, one by one uh, uh, without me. Okay, so let's try this together. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Okay, second time. Mm -hmm. Third time. Very well. Buddhang Sarananga Chami Dhammang Sarananga Chami Sanghang Sarananga Chami. Mm -hmm. 
दुते याम पे बुद्धां सरनांग छामे दुते याम पे धामां सरनांग छामे दुते याम पे सांगां सरनांग छामे ताते याम पे बुद्धां सरनांग छामे ताते याम पे धामां सरनांग छामे ताते याम पे सांगां सरनांग छामे सरनागमनं परिपूर्णं पानाति पाता वेरमाने सिखा पदं समाधियामि अदिन्ना दाना वेरमाने सिखा पदं समाधियामि कामे सुमिच्छा चारा वेरमाने सिखा पदं समाधियामि मुसावादा वेरमाने सिखा पदं समाधियामि सुरा मेरा यमाच्छा पमादा ठाना वेरा मने सिखा पदं समाधियामि तीसरा ने न सद्धिं पंचसीलं धम्मं साधुकं सुरक्षितं कत्वा अपमादे न संपादे था May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Perfect, very well. Um, uh, Tiri, uh, when you um, are here in the meeting or in any other meeting, always check your video. Are you visible in your video? Now, we could not see your face throughout the time. You had like this yeah something like that so you need to adjust your video or sit in such a way that your face is there okay in the video you need to, always you're checking with your video always checking with the video so you're looking in the camera and uh, you need to see the video also I'm also always checking my video how am I looking in the video is everything fine am I there is enough if there's an if is there enough lighting and am I complete there? Um, so, um, Tiri, you need to always check your video, okay? How do you look in, in your video? Okay, so uh, now, uh, now we have uh, nicely plenty of time. We are doing things very fast. So we will, so uh, you will learn and we will all learn a lot in, in this class. Um, now, um, uh, let's look at the homework that uh, that we are working on. Uh, so, or le let me let me do the attendance first. I will do the attendance. So, if anyone needs to go to toilet, you can now. Now you have a lot of time.
Yeah, we have the ammo not today. Okay. So today we have everybody present. That's nice. All right. So um, attendance is done. Uh, now let's look at uh, at your homeworks. How are you successful? So, uh, Jataka 5 was not successful. Who had, it, who had the responsibility? Tiri. Tiri, uh, did you post your Jataka 5 in Jataka 5? I don't see it. Jataka 5 and your, and your assignment was... Oh, you're 4, sorry. That's good. So Valentina, oh Valentina, you didn't get your, you didn't get your. Budget. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, Didi, that, that was my mistake totally. Um, okay, let, let, let's continue to see what's next. Yes, that's right. Didi has done it well, very well, complete. Um, uh, that's Didi. Uh, Didi, you did not. Uh, you don't have your name there. Um, please always make sure you remind your your mom to add your name at the at the top. You see how I have it? I have the Jataka, the number, and then my name at the top. Do you see that? Everybody, when you when you add it, uh, see if you can add your name. You see, Didi also doesn't have her name mentioned at the top. You need to have your name mentioned at the top. Okay. Look at this, how I have it. I have my name nicely mentioned at the top, and then comes uh, then comes my summary. Um, yeah, look at this. Zwe has done it perfectly. You see, he has the Jataka number, his name, and then he has the summary. This is how it should look like. Yes, Yamona also has it perfect. You see, she has. That's no no problem. We will next time. Please be careful about the spelling. It's this is not important though. Uh, the name is there, and we have to summarize nicely. Very well done. Jataka one from May. You see, very well done. So you have the Jataka number, the name. All right. So that's for those those who did not. Uh, those who did not do it this way, please remember for next time. Great. All right. So um, now let's see if in the remaining time we have 20 minutes. That's plenty of time. Uh, so let's see if the remaining time each of you can narrate, can tell the Jataka to all of the others. All right. Uh, next, uh, next week, uh, you will still have it fine. You see, we are eight people, so if one of you doesn't do the homework, uh, it's not a big problem uh, because you're doing only six Jatakas. So if two people don't do homework, but all of you come, then um, we can always do Jatakas from the past. You know, two Jatakas from the past, six new Jatakas. Okay, so everything can be done well. All right, so uh, Jataka number one. Um, that is from Andre and May have Jataka number one. So I will um, uh, ask May uh, to to tell us her summary, and then uh, Andre will be listening what's wrong and what's missing. Okay. So May, you can unmute yourself, and you can read for us your summary, please.
the merchant that he was being bad and ungrateful, so the merchant then became good. Um, can you please repeat it uh, for, for a better sound? From my side, so uh, please, please repeat it. Uh, ju just please read it again. There was a foolish and greedy merchant that disrespected the yakas. The merchant didn't care for anything and always wanted to go first. Then one day the Buddha came to tell the merchant that he was being bad and ungrateful, so the merchant then became good. Really? Andre, what do you think? Andre doesn't agree. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Why do you think that uh, the merchant disrespected uh, Yakka, the, the, the ogres? May. Because he was a foolish and greedy merchant. He was definitely foolish and greedy, but um, that doesn't mean that he respected the uh, Yakas. Actually, it was the opposite way. He respected the Yakas. It was the Buddha to be who disrespected the Yakas. This is the point, uh, because you are not supposed to respect every being. Some are evil. You do not have to respect those who are evil. You can be wrong. You may think that the other person is evil, but they are actually good. Then if you disrespect them, then that's wrong. You should not disrespect those who are good. So that's why the life is difficult, because we don't know who is a good person and who is a bad person. So we try to respect people always, and then when we find out that they are evil, then we disrespect them. But the Buddha-to-be had special knowledge. He was able to know that the Yakka, that the ogre, was an ogre, and that he was evil. And therefore, the Buddha-to-be was able to disrespect the Yakka already on the first encounter, on the first meeting. So first the foolish merchant came, and he respected the Yakka. He believed the Yakka. He was very happy. Oh, there's water over there. Okay, so we will throw away our water and we will drink over there according to your advice. That was the foolish merchant's uh, attitude. Now the wise merchant, now the Buddha-to-be, was the opposite. What, you, you, you evil man, go away. I don't want to talk with you. And he didn't listen to him at all. You see, that's total utter disrespect. But why did the Buddha-to-be disrespect the Yakka? Because he knew that the Yakka is evil, that he wants to uh, devour all of, the, all of his men. All right. So, um, actually, the wise one disrespected the Yakka. Andre, uh, anything you'd like to say about this? That covered pretty much everything. I see. Okay. Andre, can you, can you read for us your summary? Um, once upon a time, in a time and place where there were two merchants, a wise merchant and a foolish merchant, went on a journey at the same time, place, and purpose, by coincidence perhaps, to sell goods at a town where a dangerous and lengthy journey would be made through a desert or a surprise would be there. So that resources would not be a challenge met by the two, the wise merchant suggested that either of them go before or after the other. So he asked the foolish merchant whether he would go forth or stay behind. And with this choice, um, and with this choice, the foolish merchant came upon a decision quite silly, and he thought, oh, if I go forth on this path, greenery and vegetation, not touch, would be abundant, and starvation would not be a problem, with our oxen being strong and healthy, and carry for days, and it should not be a problem to cross this path, for the roads had for the road has not been trampled. So he agreed to go first. While a great idea this may seem, a better path is taken going after, and the wise merchant knew these advantages as he thought. This foolish merchant thinks of a better path going first. When I will receive fresh plants eaten by the previous traveler and roads, once rough like stone, will be smoothened by the merchant before, um, going before me. So he agreed. On the way of the foolish merchant, a yaka came, dripping in, in a pristine robe with lotus flowers and water lilies, as well as men holding a carriage, where the yaka lay, and muddy shoes with swords and shields. 
And with his attire, the foolish merchant inquired to how the yaka was so wet and moist. So the yaka explained that a rain forest just a few yojanas away always rains and suggested to throw away a water, a trick to devour them when weak. And devour them they did. While the foolish merchant was eaten, although the same event occurred, the wise merchant recognized a shadow was not cast in the bright sun. So he came to the realization that the yaka was among them and denied his suggestion as no cloud or lighting was in sight and thunder was not heard. So they sold the remains of the foolish merchant they found and came back with not a single man dead. That's all good, except <laughs> it had to be three to five sentences. Okay, so let's now count Andre's sentences. <laughs> all right. It had to be three to five sentences. You wrote it too long. All right, that's too much. You, you would not be able to do this every week. That would be too much work. So the idea is that it's simple. So this is a long, long sentence. That's fine. So that's one sentence. Then we have, oh, wow. Those are like, okay, we would have to say that this one is a sentence. This is another sentence. This is another sentence. Oh, uh, there, there, there it finishes. So he agreed to go first here. And then uh, this is another sentence and another sentence and another sentence. Oh, wow, these are super long sentences. Um, wow, it's like <laughs> all of that is <laughs> one sentence. Let me see. It goes, oh, wow, all the way here. That's a super long sentence. And then uh, here is another another one, super long sentences. Uh, that's too much. If everybody did it like this, we will never have enough time to, to read the stories, you know, from everybody. So you need to make it shorter. You have it like twice as, uh, twice as long than me. <laughs> and my one is like the maximum length that you would be allowed, okay? Nobody go longer than me. Like my one is the longest always, okay? Always, um, you can summarize, you know, make a summary of the story to make it simple. Okay, so uh, let's continue uh, with story two. That's Emily. Uh, just please re read for us your summary. Can I go get it? Okay, so uh, we will be waiting for Emily. Now we move on to story number three, Denza. Denza, please read, read for us your, your story. There are two merchants selling at and Habura, one greedy one and one honest, and the other honest. They separate to reduce competition, and the greedy one comes to a house of a young girl and her grandmother. She pleaded, she pleads for a ring of beads in exchange for a dusty bowl that is revealed to be solid gold. The greedy merchant wanted to get it without giving anything. She, he leaves thinking to come back for it later. When the when the honest merchant comes, however, he finds the gold and immediately offers his whole cart for the golden bull. Mm -hmm. Nice, very well, thank you. This is pretty good. Uh, this is pretty good length. I think I think we, we can we can do with everybody with, with this length. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, main point here is that there were two merchants. One who was offered a golden bowl for his stuff because the customers they wanted to get uh, some nice stuff and um, uh, he didn't want to give anything for it he just took the the bowl and said this is this has no value then another merchant came and he said oh this bowl is hundred thousand pieces of money i don't i have only one thousand pieces of I have everything I have has value of 1,000 pieces of money. So that's not much. How can I ever pay you for that bow? So, but they wanted to, to get paid anyway. So he gave them everything or almost everything took the bowl and went away. The problem is that the first merchant who wanted to deceive the people, he uh, was angry with the second one that he lost, he lost his golden bow. So, um, since then they were, the merchant who lost the bowl 
and the uh, uh, great later became an enemy of the Buddha, Devadatta, and the one who got the bowl, the one who was real, the one who was true, became the Buddha. All right, so uh, chapter number four, uh, chapter number two, Emily. Once the Buddha told a story about a smart merchant. The merchant traveled to the desert. He was sleepy and slept. When he woke up, the carts were going backwards. Then he said to turn around and keep going while he asked heaven to help them. And heaven did by giving them a spot. So the smart merchant said there must be water under there. So he sent his men to dig even if there was a rock. And after they smashed the rock, water came out and saved them. Nice. Very well. Thank you very much. Now, uh, chapter number four. Uh, sorry, uh, story, story number four is with Didi. Once a rich lady loved a slave but did not want her parents to know. The older brother was a monk. He thought the younger brother could not become a monk. The Buddha encouraged him, and he went in meditation and achieved a hardship. Mm. And the Buddha told him a story about a dead mouse. Very nice, very nice. You see, this is an excellent summary. Tiri has done it amazingly. Very well done, Tiri. You have done it alone, or did anyone help you? I I think I did it alone. Uh, I mean, alone. But my mom helped me with a new notebook. But that's nothing related to the story. So that that's right. Matter. Nice. So Tiri has done it well. So now you have everybody seen. Tiri has made a nice summary of the story. You don't learn much about uh, the story from from the summary, but you get some idea. Okay. So there was some monk. He didn't believe uh, a brother. He didn't believe his younger brother. Uh, will be successful because his younger brother couldn't memorize even four lines, you know, in uh, a four lines poem. So he thought, oh, my younger brother, he can never be a good monk if he cannot memorize any text and, uh, you know, about the Buddha. And so he expelled him from the monastery. But uh, the younger monk saw the Buddha on the way and got meditation instruction from the Buddha. As he meditated, he became an arahant. And the Buddha then invited this young monk for a meal. The young monk then showed psychic powers. He saw he showed that he can make him his body into one thousand. So suddenly there were he was alone in the monastery because everybody else went for the meal, but he made himself one thousand, so the monastery was filled with thousand monks. <laughs> you know? To sh so um, he had psychic powers. And so his brother was also amazed. Hmm, my younger brother is actually really good. So the other monks, they were wondering, look at this, this elder brother who was an Arahant could not recognize that his younger brother can become fully enlightened. But the Buddha could do that. So the Buddha is this special ability that he knows who can be successful and no one else can know that, even the fully enlightened people. And then uh, uh, the story goes that, uh, the story from the past life uh, goes that uh, in the past, um, uh, the young man, he picked up an old mouse based on an advice of a, of a wealthy man. He picked up an old mouse and he sold the mouse for, uh, for a cent, for a, little, uh, for a little money. Then he took this money and he bought something else, some uh, uh, honey. And then when he took the, he took honey and water and he helped some people who were tired, then they were happy. Oh, you gave us honey and water. We will give you flowers. They gave him some flowers. Then he sold the flowers. He got some more money. Then he bought and again something else. He helped someone else and he got even more. And like this, he sold, got more, sold, got more, you know, as he was helping people. And he gradually became extremely rich. And as he became very rich, he, and the, the wealthy man recognized this young man who was very poor, but now he's very rich. 
he thought, oh, this is a very intelligent man. He needs to get married with my daughter. So he got married with the daughter of the wealthiest man of the city. And uh, when, the, when the rich man died, this young man um, became the heir. You know, he got all of the heritage. He got all of the wealth of the wealthy man as well. Because he followed the wealthy man's advice. Okay, so this was the story three. Now let's move on. Uh, four, sorry. And now let's move on to story six. Zui. Uh, mine's kind of long, so can I shorten it? My yes, way, please. Or do we just like... Right. Shorten, um, shorten it, yes. So there was this... Um, wealthy man and um he had like a lot of he had like a lot of monk ropes and then he used those and wait, he had also a lot of food as well and then when he became a monk he used all of those things and then um like after that um someone found out and then then some of the bhikkhus brought him the wealthy man or the wealthy monk the wealthy monk to the buddha and then when um, the Buddha asked the question, um, the wealthy man became enraged and then he threw off his outer robe. And then, and then um, when the Buddha saw that, he didn't get mad. He just, um, what is it? he just, um, just like said, like you were trying to seek righteous for like 12 years. And then that calmed the wealthy monk down, and then he put on his robe and then went away. And then all the people surrounded the Buddha, and then they asked him the the story on how like he was seeking righteousness for twelve years or like the past. And then um, so then he, you're uh, getting very much into details, right? Okay, so in summary, you are actually taking, uh, getting, uh, actually you are uh, ignoring so some of the details. So to summarize what you've just said, you would say there was a monk who was previously a wealthy man. He, uh, he used his wealth as a monk and the other monks didn't like it. Then uh, uh, he was called up uh, in front of the Buddha and the Buddha admonished him too. And the monk uh, was uh, was sorry, and he was ready to live in his under robe alone, in one robe alone. So the Buddha said, "But uh, this is not okay because you cannot be naked as a monk. You know, in one robe alone is not enough." So uh, that's enough. If you said it like this, that would be totally enough to know. Aha! So there was a wealthy man. He was admonished by the Buddha, and uh, then. Uh, he decided to be totally poor, but the Buddha did not accept it. He had to stay in balance, you know, not too, not too poor, not too healthy, middle path. So the Buddha then gave a story where this, where this young monk uh, was an ogre, a yakka, and he was searching for righteousness, for that's what's right. This yakka always would catch people who came to his place and he would Ask them, so what is righteousness? And if they did not know the answer, he would devour them. And after a long time, the Buddha to be came and uh, he, will, he knew the answer. So the Yakka did not devour the Buddha to be. And he also released two of the Buddha to be's uh, friends. One was brother, one was friends. They were all princes at that time. Uh, who came before the Buddha to be and failed to answer the question, and they were ready, you know, to be devoured. So the uh, so the ogre he released he released uh, the two friends or the brother and the friend or the two princes um, uh, from from the palace of the Buddha to be, and all of the three then happily stayed with the with the ogre. Uh, they had to leave from their palace. Uh, because uh, there were some uh, family problems and then uh, they could return when their uh, father passed away and uh, the Buddha to be became the king. Uh, he made one of his princes the commander in chief. Uh, the other one uh, also got some special uh, promotion 
and they also kept the ogre in the palace with all of the care because the ogre promised that he will not devour people anymore. So because the ogre promised that he will be nice, he got very special treatment in the palace. Okay, he got the choicest food, very nice place to stay, and so everybody was happy. So that's the story in, in very, very brief. Okay, so we have to finish now. Uh, I will distribute the Jatakas to you. Um, so, um, uh, Andrea, please take number seven. Emily, take eight. May will take nine. Tenza can take ten. Uh, Tiri uh, can take eleven. Valentina will still keep her five. And um, Zue will take 12. How is this possible that it goes like that? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Aha, because I've missed Yamona. Uh, so Yamona, uh, you can take... Let me see if, if one of the stories is longer. And therefore I would actually assign half of the story to, uh, to the two people. So, uh, story seven, I'll share with you my screen so you see what's going on. So, uh, story seven has uh, three pages, super short, okay? Uh, story eight has about four pages, story nine has again about three pages so this time it will be so sweet for most of you uh, story 10 is bigger it has about seven pages okay 11 is super short it's like three and a half pages and 12 is also super short so you know what I will divide the story um, 10 or I will not divide it but I will just give it to the two people and um, um, let me see Sir, how many pages are in um, uh, story seven? About three. Uh, three oh. or four. It's uh, like this time, it's very sweet for all of you. Um, it's, it's except for, for this story 10. And mm -hmm. let me see how, how long is the present story and then the past life story. Okay, I see. So this is pretty good. So this has uh, this story has a present life story and the past life story. Do you know what I mean? Does everybody know what I mean? Present life story and past life story. The story during the Buddha's time and the story during the life of the Buddha before he was the Buddha. Okay, so present life story means during the time when the Buddha was the Buddha. And then the Buddha explains what happened in some of the past lives. So that is the past life story. So each of the stories has these two parts, present, uh, present life story and past life story. So I suggest, so I suggest that, uh, uh, that uh, Tenza takes uh, 10A and Yamuna will take 10B, all right? So uh, Tenza will, uh, will be uh, writing a summary of the present life story and Yamona will be writing the summary of the past life story okay so you don't have so much reading and everybody else here will learn nicely what the story is about this nice this time is very nice but make sure try to keep it in three sentences all right you can do four or five but try to get three all right I need to have it a little long because I need to add a lot of details, you know, all of the details of the story. Uh, for me, it's a little bit more stressful uh, because I'm uh, a knowledge, uh, I, I'm expected to be, you know, a scholar, a knowledgeable person and understand it very well. So, my uh, so I have a lot of uh, rules uh, according to which I need to write my summary. But you don't have to do that, okay? You just need to write in brief what 
uh, what did the story, you know, uh, what is the story in brief about? And then we will go into detail as we meet here. Nice. Anyone has any question? Anything you'd like to say? No question. Nice. It was a pleasure to see everybody. Uh, I will again make posts for your homework in uh, the Facebook. You need to wait for that. Okay. Wait for it. Even if it is until Wednesday or Thursday, please wait for it. Write it today and wait until the post is ready in Facebook. Okay. They will be already on the same day. So, so uh, if you see already there is a story seven, just wait a little and there will be all the remaining stories as well. Okay. Nice. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be successful in everything you do. Goodbye, Venerable, Goodbye, Venerable, Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Nice, thank you.